setting timing on a full auto browning 1919 or 1917. You don't have to worry about this on one of the semi-auto guns, but you definitely need to learn how to do this if you have a full auto. Um, basically what happens is, is the firing pin gets dropped before the bolt system is completely closed uh, to keep from beating the gun to death and making it run, and it, which allows it to run smoother. Um, so we're going to measure how far our firing pin is dropped uh, when you pull the trigger. And the easiest way to do that is with a set of feeler gauges right here and right here. I just buy a set and take them apart and I grab two feeler gauges that add up to around 70 thousandths of an inch. I got a 35 thousandths gauge here and a 36 thousandths gauge here and together is 71 thousandths which is close enough. GI spec is anywhere between 30 to 120 thousandths inch. So 70 is, is right in the middle uh, and it runs really well on all of the types of ammo out there in my experience with it. So I always set mine to 70. And basically what happens is, is you're going to insert the feeler gauges in between this barrel extension and the trunnion. And you're going to close it and then you're going to pull the trigger and see if the firing pin drops. Um, you want it to just drop at 70 thousandths. You don't want it to drop at 68 thousandths, and you, you don't, you know, you want it to drop well before the 120 thousandths, the upper limit of it. So we're shooting for 70 thousandths. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the bolt handle back a little bit, and it's going to expose the barrel notches on your barrel. We're going to stick the feeler gauges in it, and we're going to close the assembly back tight, pinching those gauges in between the trunnion and the barrel extension right here. Um, if you pull them back they fall out, uh, we're going to set them back in. Just pull it back, it's kind of under spring tension. Make sure both of the blades are underneath in between the barrel extension and the trunnion. Make sure they're trapped and they stay held like that. Okay. Now, with the feeler gauges trapped between the trunnion and the barrel extension, um, if you notice right here on the trigger pack, the Israelis drilled and tapped a set screw and they have a jam nut. Um, basically what this set screw does is it, it, it changes the uh, height at which the trigger can be uh, raised. So if you screw that in, it's going to keep the trigger pushed down and it won't let it trip the sear. So um, with the Israeli set screw uh, modification, the first thing you're going to do is grab a 3 8 wrench, loosen the jam nut, and you're going to screw the screw in clockwise um, quite a bit. When you pull the trigger, it won't it won't drop the firing pin. So now, once we get it at this point, we're going to keep upward pressure on it, and we're going to slowly back the screw out until you hear the firing pin drop. And you're going to do this nice and slow, nice and easy, because once it drops, you're going to stop screwing the screwdriver out, stop turning it counterclockwise the second the firing pin drops. Keep some pretty stiff pressure up against the trigger. back it out. Keep going slow. Right there the trigger dropped. So to test this we're going to screw back in a few turns. We're going to recharge the gun and then re put the uh, feeler gauges back in between the trunnion and the barrel extension and we're going to unscrew it a few more times Not right there it stopped so at this point keep your screwdriver tight take your 3 8 wrench tighten the jam nut and 
basically your timing is set at this point. You're going to want to check it again, recock the gun, bring it back forward, and when you pull up it should just trip the, the firing pin, which it did. You can test at exactly what point the firing pin drops by varying the, the distance in the gauges and finding at what point it does drop and what point it doesn't that will give you your exact timing spec if you want to test it to see exactly which point it drops at I start stacking multiple feeler gauges at this point um, we want to find out at which point it will no longer trip the sear uh, with the feeler gauges so now instead of putting a 35 and a 36 which adds up to 71 I'm putting a 35 uh, 26 and a 10 uh, which which um, adds up to 71 same thing we're going to close it making sure the three blades are trapped under there and pull the trigger it, it cycled so we're going to reset it we're going to add the next blade up We're going to add the next blade up, which now makes 72 thousandths. Close it, see if it pops the trigger. It does. I'm going to do it again with the next blade up after that. Which makes it 73 thousandths. Make sure all three blades are trapped between there. Pull the trigger. It does. Reset it. Do it again. Do it again. Okay. Now it won't drop the trigger. So that's seventy five thousandths. Um, it dropped the trigger at 74 thousandths, so that's what our timing is set at. That's close enough. That's right in between the 30 and 120 thousandths GI spec. That gun's going to run perfectly like that. Now I'll show you what you got to do if you have a GI uh, lock frame. A GI lock frame does not have the Israeli set screw modification. So what you're going to do is you're going to bend this hook up or down to influence uh, where the firing pin is allowed to drop. Uh, by bending this up or down it changes the height at which the sear releases the firing pin. So if you have the GI, modifi the GI lock frame you're gonna have to bend this trigger up or down to influence where it drops. If you'll notice there's a reinforced part right here in the trigger um, and what you want to do is clamp it in your vise just below this uh, reinforcement point. So you're going to clamp it into your vise like this. Just tight enough to hold it. And then you're going to put thumb pressure on it right here or on the opposite direction and you're going to lightly bend it uh, that way or this way by just putting pressure on it. You're going to have to bend it a little bit, stick it back inside your lock frame and check it and test it. Um, once you get it to the point where it drops to 70 thousandths, you're basically done. Um, the Israeli lock frame modification is a very good modification. It saves all the test bending and test fitting um, present in the GI setup. But uh, some people like to run the the original USGI parts, I understand that.